Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And it's lovely to see such a large audience here this afternoon. Uh, I, I suspect we'll be staying for the whole of the meeting <laughs> and uh, studying the minute points we deal with. Um, I, we're going to have start off. I've got one little comment to make before we start. And when, if, if and when members or members of the public are speaking, will they please make sure they turn the microphones on and, and get their mouths fairly near to the microphone. Uh, our first uh, item on the agenda is a uh, fire safety from Tracy. Thank you, Chairman. If the fire alarm does sound, please can you make your way out of the building via the nearest available exit? And that's through the main doors here and the fire exit here. Um, the building has an auto call out facility to the fire service. Uh, so nobody needs to call the fire service and the fire assembly point is at the barrier in the front car park. And in the event of a fire, I will sweep the area surrounding the council chamber to make sure that everybody has left. Thank you very much. Uh, any apologies, please? Yes, Chairman, we have apologies from Councillor Downey and we have apologies from Councillor Christine Ambrose-Smith and Councillor David Ambrose-Smith is here as our substitute. Thank you. Uh, and do we have any declarations of interest from members? That's a no. Uh, and we're now looking at the, the minutes from the last meeting. Has any members got any reason to suggest why I shouldn't sign them as being a true record of uh, the meeting? No, nope. nope. so I'll sign those at the end, end, end of the meeting. Uh, we now move into Chairman's announcements, and uh, I'm delighted to say that we've um, uh, that, that three of our, uh, our, our members of the planning team have been appointed team leaders, and that's Dan Smith, Tony Hilton, and Catherine Looper. They were regular planning officers, and now they're senior planning officers, and that shows quite a appreciation for the hard work they've done, the studies they've undertaken and their dedication to the work. And I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking them and wishing them luck in their new, more burdensome role. Um, the, next, um, the next thing I've got to say is, is, is I'm very mixed emotions. Um, it's an excellent thing that people who work in this uh, district council are recognized throughout the business as being professional hard-working, and the, the natural way is, of course, they're, they're sought after. Uh, and this is something which is a, a mixture because we're, I'm very, very pleased that we've got um, the most senior person in the planning department has been snapped up by Cambridge University. Uh, I'm very pleased that she's progressed and uh, increased her knowledge and professionalism while working here. She's been here 15 years. I'm talking, of course, about Rebecca Saunt, who is leaving us very, very shortly. Uh, so I'm, I'm delighted that her career is progressing and her uh, horizons will widen and uh, everything as a human being wishes me good luck. I have to say, however, that I'm really quite upset uh, because I'm losing a very professional planning manager who is helpful, hardworking, diplomatic, inspirational, profession, and very kind. And, and I'm gonna lose this help and assistance. And believe me, when you get to my age, uh, you need this uh, guidance and help, which Rebecca is being done. So I, I wish her the very best of luck and I congratulate her on her appointment. I thank her for the service she's given and uh, like to say that if, if I'm still here, and she wants to come back, uh, then she would be delighted. But thank you very full, oh, much for all you've done, Rebecca. And I'd like to stand back. I forgot to say it, emotional. 
Okay. Uh, that's all I've got to say in the way of chairman's announcements. And I was going to dismiss some of the crowd, but. <laughs> right, well, we move on to item number five in the officer's presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. And good afternoon, everyone. So this is. Sorry about that. Um, so yes, this is item five. Um, this is a full application for 45 dwellings, new access, estate roads, driveways, parking areas, open space, external lighting, pumping station and associated infrastructure. And this is at land west of Station Road in Islam. So this is the site location plan. Um, you can see the site is edged in red with the development envelope in black, and this is from the local plan. The green area shows the conservation area and the pink shaded property at the top of that slide shows where the listed building is. If we move on to the Iceland neighbourhood plan, the um, development envelope has been updated to actually um, include the site, which is here. This is an aerial photo of the site um, showing Islam, um, showing the site in context with, with the village of Islam. You've got Fordham to the south there. This is our site here. Fordham you've got down here. And this is Station Road here. Close up um, aerial photo of the site, um, just to put it in context, and um, obviously members will be familiar with it as we walked around the site this, this morning. Um, and the site is here, Fordham Road is here, the beaches, community centre is here with the recreational ground next to it, and then Station Road runs to the east of the site, and further to the west you've got the new Bloor Homes development, which is, is still ongoing. So this is the proposed site location, site um, layout plan. Um, the plan shows 45 new dwellings. Um, the new access will be from Station Road. There will also be two new footpaths linking to Station Road and Fordham Road. The dwelling mix comprises of four one bed dwellings, which is shown in the khaki color. And that's here. Um, 18 two bed dwellings, which is in the mustardy color. Which is here. Um, two, four two bed bungalows, which is the light blue color. Which are these ones? Here. and 17 three bed dwellings in the grey um, colour. So these ones here. And two four bed dwellings, which is in the corner in the dark blue here. So the open space is to the north um, with an area of, of suds and a pumping station is to the east side of the open space. This is the open space, suds area, and the pumping station here. So in terms of photos of the site, um, this is taken from the Lady Francis Court, which is the Fordham Road side and which is where we um, all stood this morning. This is looking west. And this is a view of the site taken from the gap when we walked round to the station road side. Um, there was a gap in the hedge where we were standing near and this was the view from inside that gap. 
So this is Fordham Road with Lady Frances Court houses on your right hand side and where we were this morning. And this is Station Road view looking south again where we walked past this morning. And this is the view of the site from Station Road, a bit further north, just as you, um, just before you enter the village. The site is on your left-hand side. And this is just as you're entering Iceland from the south, where the um, the the um, road uh, changes from 60 to 30 into the village. <coughs> And this is the view um, from Station Road looking south, where there was that gap in between the houses from uh, Lady Payton, uh, Lady Frances Court looking into the site. So the main considerations for this application is a principle of development, visual amenity, design and layout, residential amenity, highway safety and car and cycle parking, flood risk and drainage, biodiversity, trees and landscaping, and other matters. So in, in relation to principle of development, the site is within the development envelope of Islam as updated by the Islam neighborhood plan. The site is considered to relate well to the village and its local amenities. It's close to the recreational ground and existing built form. It is a pocket of land on the edges and in between the two main roads of Station Road and Fordham Road. Policy growth too of the local plan is relevant and seeks to ensure that new development is directed to the right places and within the development envelopes. Site would fall within one of the exceptions to growth too, the site is at, as the site is allocated both in the local plan and the Iceland neighbourhood plan for housing. And this is policies ISL1 of the local plan and policy 1C in the Iceland neighbourhood plan. Furthermore, policy 1C of the neighbourhood plan allocates the site for approximately 45 dwellings. It is therefore considered that the proposal complies with these policies and is, and is acceptable in principle. In relation to visual amenity design and layout, here are a few examples of the elevations and floor plans for the dwelling types. So this one shows the elevations and floor plans for the for one bed dwelling. These are the elevations and floor plans for the two bed bungalows. These are the elevations and floor plans for the two bed dwellings, two story dwellings. And these are the elevations and floor plans of the three bed dwellings. So these are plots two, three, four, five, and six, which front station road. These are the elevations and floor plans for the four bed dwellings, and these are plots 20 and 21. Just a couple of um, 3D views as well, which you had in your members pack as well. This is um, a visual perspective street view from Station Road, from where the um, access will be taken from. Got some chimneys there that break up the roofscape as well. This is another aerial view of Station Road looking west to give an idea of context with the existing built form in the surrounding area. This aerial view is from Fordham Road looking south, so the other side, um, close to where we were standing today on site. So in terms of residential amenity, policy EMV2 of the local plan is relevant and seeks all new development to protect residential amenity for nearby and future occupiers. Policy 3 of the ISM neighbourhood plan also echoes this and expects all new developments to provide adequate space for future occupiers. The Council's Design Guide SPD advises about um, ad adequate plot sizes and garden sizes which are met by this proposed development. Plots 1 to 11 along the station road frontage have been amended to include a secondary window to side elevations to allow for natural ventilation and to mitigate against noise.
In relation to highway safety and car and cycle parking, policy COM 7 of the local plan is relevant and policy 3 of the Iceland neighbourhood plan, which seeks safe, inclusive and convenient access. A new access will be created from Station Road, which will afford good visibility in both directions. Two new footpaths will link to Station Road and Fordham Road with a new drop curb crossing at the Fordham Road end. 96 car parking spaces are also proposed to comply with policy COM8 of the local plan. Policy compliant would be 90 spaces, so an additional six spaces will be proposed. In addition, 13 visitor spaces will be distributed across the site, which is two more than is required to serve the development. Less than 50% of the car parking will be tandem. Secure cycle parking is allocated for each plot in a shed in the back garden, which complies with the council cycle parking standards under policy COM8. The local highways authority have raised no objections to the access and general road layout of the proposal, and as such, it is considered that the development is acceptable in relation to highway safety and parking. In relation to flood risk and drainage, the site is within flood zone one. Policy EMV8 of the, uh, of the uh, local plan is relevant together with policy 1C of the in, uh, item neighbourhood plan, which seeks all new development to address flood risk and the water environment. Policy three of the neighbourhood plan also requires sufficient infrastructure capacity to support the proposed development. A flood risk assessment was submitted. The, local, the lead local flood authority initially objected on the basis of the groundwater source protection zone, infiltration rates and infiltration basin. Amended plans were submitted, which overcame these concerns and the um, LLFA were able to remove their objections subject to conditions, which are listed under Appendix 1 of the report. It is therefore considered that the proposal complies with the relevant policies in relation to <coughs> flood risk and drainage. In relation to biodiversity, policy EMV7 is relevant and seeks to protect the biodiversity of land and buildings and minimise harm to or loss of environmental features. The policy also expects developments to provide mitigation measures that will enhance or recreate habitats on or off site. Biodiversity is also included within policies 1C, 3 and 7 of the neighbourhood plan. The Iceland Nature Reserve is situated approximately 800 metres to the south of the site. The application was accompanied by a preliminary ecolo eco ecology assessment and a reptile survey and a biodiversity metric calculation and supporting statements. The proposal will include a number of mitigation measures and enhancements, including bird and bat boxes, high binoculars for reptiles and amphibians, and a good variety of hedge species to encourage wildlife. A net gain will be achieved, 9.15% gain in habitat creation and 22.80% gain in hedgerow units. In addition, a financial contribution will be secured towards the enhancement of the Iceland Nature Reserve project, which is being led by the County Council and the Wildlife Trust. The contribution will be secured by the Section 106 legal agreement. Another addition will be a welcome leaflet from the developers to all new residents showing alternative dog walking routes to lessen the pressure on the Iceland Nature Reserve, all of which have been supported by the Wildlife Trust. In relation to trees and landscaping, an arboricultural impact assessment and a landscape visual impact assessment were submitted. Six trees will need to be removed along the boundaries of the site to facilitate the footpaths and new access from Station Road. All vegetation of moderate quality will be retained and protected throughout the construction. Tree protection measures will also be put into place. The development proposal includes a comprehensive scheme, landscaping scheme, including new planting of new trees, um, and across the site and hedges to complement and enhance the edge of settlement location and its existing green infrastructure. No objections have been received from the council's tree officer and therefore it is considered to comply with the relevant policies of the local plan, the Iceland neighbourhood plan and the natural environment SPD. So in terms of other matters um, and in, in relation to historic environment, the site is not in a conservation area but adjacent to it along the northern boundary there are no listed buildings nearby. Um, there are no archeological impacts and there are no objections from the conservation officer. In relation to waste provision and collection, adequate waste storage per plot and details for collection are acceptable and the council's waste team raised no objection. In relation to affordable housing mix, it would be 100% affordable housing, a mix of one bed, 
two bed houses and bungalows, three beds and four beds. And the tenure split would be 20 shared ownership and 25 rented. This therefore complies with policies HOU1 and HOU3 of the local plan and policy 1B of the Iceland neighbourhood plan. And no objections have been received from the council's housing officer. In terms of land contamination, phases one and two ground investigation reports were submitted. No objection from the environmental health officer and complies, and this complies with policy EMV9 of the local plan and policy 1C of the ISOM neighbourhood plan. In terms of sustainability and climate change, an energy statement um, was submitted which um, described a fabric first approach first, which is high levels of thermal insulation, air tightness and natural ventilation with a carbon reduction of 2%. Further renewable energy methods should be explored, however, and therefore a condition is recommended to provide details of how this can be achieved to comply with policy EMV4 of the local plan, the climate change SPD and policy three of the ISOM neighbourhood plan. We, I am also recommending a condition um, with regards to electrical charging points, which you will see on the on appendix one. In terms of the section 106 legal agreement, this is currently being negotiated and will secure affordable housing, public open space, suds, waste bins, the biodiversity contribution and education contributions and the mobile library service. So in summary, the site is allocated in the local plan and Iceland neighbourhood plan for housing development. The proposal demonstrates a high quality development, introducing good design features that would enhance the character of Iceland whilst creating a sense of place and distinctiveness. The applicant has demonstrated a net gain in, in biodiversity and will contribute towards the enhancement of the Iceland nature reserve, which will be secured through section 106 legal agreement. The proposal would provide adequate car parking over and above the council's car parking standards and adequate and secure cycle parking. The site is well connected to the village through new footpaths at Station Road and Fordham Road, including a dropped curb crossing. The development would secure a number of contributions through Section 106 legal agreement to mitigate against the proposal, and there are no objections from statutory consultees. The, the application is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for a very comprehensive report. I appreciate it. Uh, we've got uh, speakers now, Edward Clark, Kate Duval, and Richard Radcliffe. Uh, I don't know whether to consider you as individual speakers or, pardon? You are a group, I'm, I'm told. <laughs> so would you all like to come and take your place at the table? Please, if you speak, speak close to the microphone and you have five minutes to speak between you uh so let's patrick edgerton he's part of your group as well okay well uh if there are four of you i won't be completely strict on the time limit but i would ask you to respect it if you can go ahead can you hear me okay thank you chair and members i'd like to thank angela for a well-reasoned report and the useful dialogue prior to and during the application process and express my support for the recommendation of approval the application delivers much needed bespoke affordable housing in a sustainable location in accordance with the local plan and Islam neighbourhood plan. As members will have seen in the officer's report, we have responded to comments received and amended the proposal when appropriate throughout both the pre-application discussions and the planning application process. With exception to comments relating to the provision of a service road, which is not supported by the case officer or conservation officer, there are no objections or comments of concern from statutory consultees. The case officer has confirmed the proposal to constitute a high quality development, introducing some good design features that would enhance the character of Islam whilst creating a sense of place and distinctiveness. The proposal also offers a biodiversity net gain of just over 9% for habitat units and 22.8% gain in hedgerow units. 
ecological enhancement features and much needed financial contributions to the Islam Nature Reserve and education sector. The site is well connected to the village and the proposed drop curb crossing, pedestrian and cycle links will aid movement from the site and beyond. To conclude, the application represents the efficient use of allocated land and will deliver much needed bespoke affordable housing to Islam. And I reiterate my support for the officer's recommendation of approval, and I trust the information will assist members in the debate. I'll be happy to answer any questions members may have, and we'll now hand you over to Kate Duval from Havebury Housing Partnership. Thank you, Edward. Good afternoon. Havebury are a local registered provider with 20 years experience managing nearly 7,000 homes across Suffolk, Norfolk and Cambridgeshire. We provide high quality homes for our residents. I've been fortunate to be involved with this site from almost the beginning, working with the Trust, the Parish Council, our design team and also Angela in developing a scheme for 100% affordable homes. The design has been carefully refined over a lengthy period of time to take on board feedback. Our proposal offers 45 high quality homes built to nationally described space standards, ensuring those homes have suitable storage, practical room sizes and gardens. Station Road is an excellent location on allocated land with great village amenities. Half the homes on Station Road will be for rent for those on the housing register, offering affordable homes to help satisfy some of the significant unmet demand. The other homes will be offered for shared ownership, which offers, as the name suggests, an affordable route to home ownership. In increasingly challenging times, we've seen demand for shared ownership properties, an aspiration for many, uh, outstrip supply. Feedback from our consultation confirms local people support the scheme and as an opportunity to stay and continue to grow a diverse and sustainable community in which to create their homes and lives. I very much hope you sense the passion with which we bring this proposal to you. Enormous amounts of work have gone into ensuring a policy compliant and attractive scheme. I hope you are minded in line with Angela's recommendation to grant the application. For one, I can't wait to get on with the construction and to start delivering affordable homes in this community. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Richard Radcliffe, Chair of the Lady Payton Hospital Almshouses Charity, which has operated for many centuries in Iceland. I and my six fellow trustees, four of whom are current members of the Parish Council, are in full support of this scheme on land which it owns. It has been a long-term aspiration of the charity to use its land resource to address our very pressing housing needs. This scheme will ensure that our long established char charity is relevant to our village today and remains sustainable for future years. The site is identified within the recently adopted Na Island Neighbourhood Plan. The layout and the design of the scheme has been subject to full consultation, ensures that it fully meets the requirements as set out in the policies and design guidance. The scheme maintains and enhances the village character. It is in, in keeping with the scale of its surrounding, is informally aligned and avoids perimeter blocks. The development is a natural extension of our village and adopts a style and a street design appropriate to Iceland. The charity has worked in partnership with Havebury Housing. As a result of the development, the charity will take ownership of further homes to rent and significantly contribute to, to meeting the aims of the village's neighborhood plan, the objects of the charity, and the need for new affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next gentleman, are you wishing to speak? Well, you've, you've very neatly come to five minutes and eight seconds, so uh, I've no need to be tolerant <laughs> at all. Um, members, um, questions? Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Thank you for your presentation. I'm not sure which of you I'm addressing this, this question to. In the local highways comments, it says that you're labeling things as cycle paths, but in the local highways uh, opinion, they're not wide enough, as in you've got 2.5 meter paths and the, the width should be increased to three meters. And yet you, particularly in the opening comments said, this is gonna create great cycle links. How do you marry those two together when the Highways Authority is saying actually they're not wide enough to be cycle links? I can take that question, but Patrick is on hand as transport consultant. Um, so there are so there is a cycle link through the site, um, which actually cuts through the public open space. 
which is, is a shared use surface. Um, but we have also got access along Station Road as well into the village. So, that, so they are sufficient. I don't know when these comments came in because the, the latest ream of comments were full support from local highways with no objection. Sorry, what we've got from the 31st of March is, I do not object to this application, but then when he goes on to comment, he says, I note that the 2.5 metre paths to Fordham Road and Station Road are still labelled as cycle links, despite the narrow widths. I advise that they be labelled as footpaths only, or the widths increase to three metres. So shared use surfaces that were deemed not wide enough have been amended in terms of, of their delineation so that they are footpaths. But to be absolutely clear, there are footpaths and a cycle link as well. Councillor Trapp. Thank you. I was going to raise the same question. And it's interesting that, I mean, perhaps you could increase them by 0.5 meters to satisfy dual use. That, I mean, I have another question about the shared ownership. Um, is that going to be shared ownership in perpetuity? Uh, we aren't bound by a designated protected area, um, but our experience is that most shared ownership properties do stay in that tenure. Okay, because I think, I think that's a requirement, isn't it? That it has to be in perpetuity, shared ownership. It depends on the restrictions imposed. And the other question I had was about what kind, what, what do you define it for? Who is going to draw up what, who is eligible for this? You know, it's, it's affordable housing. Is it going to be local residents? Is it going to be association with Dyslam? Is it, what kind of criteria are you going to use? Um, so the, it will be anybody who's registered on the housing register. Um, our hope is that there will be a local connection applicable and a cascade um, so that it is for the residents of Islam and, and the local population, but that will have to, we have to also ensure that those properties don't sit empty if there's a wider ranging need in a slightly um, wider geographical location. Um, did you have the same question about shared ownership because that's a different application route or? No, I don't know. It's just affordable housing. Thank you. Okay, and can I carry on, yes. Chairman? Yeah. Which is, of course, uh, my normal bugbear about uh, electrical vehicle charging points. And it's got to be made, made sure that there is provision, even if it's just a wire, for the, for the um, to those places where, which are remote for, or at a distance from, from the actual house. And that they must be actually connected to the mains in the house itself. Is that, is that what? You're conceiving your, what your. I think subject to the conditions, that's our, our expectation. Yes. Okay, uh, David Ambrose Smith. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the presentation and, and, and you as well, Angela. Very good. And it's nice to see everybody's singing from the same hymn sheet. I just have only one concern because the other concerns have been answered, uh, and that's the uh, station road and the speed limit along there. Uh, I believe it's too fast uh, at 40, at, uh, 40 miles an hour in order to be reduced. Uh, have you put anything, has anybody asked you to do that at all? I'm going to hand you over to the transport consultant, but what I would say is that's not something that we control. We, we don't have control over the, over the speed limits. And then over to you, Patrick. Hello. Is that? Might need to get a bit yeah. closer. Is that working? It's working, yes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this, uh, actually the lady that um, introduced it made a mistake. It's not uh, a national speed limit, which is 60 ends at the bridge, and then it drops to 40, and it's 40 past the site, and then 30 further north into the village. Um, we had a pre-application with Cambridgeshire County Council, and it was clear that we'd be able to meet even the default limits of the um, visibility spray requirements, uh, which is much more than we need. So uh, what they did ask us to do was do a speed survey, and interestingly, the northbound speed going into the village is actually 33 miles an hour. 
uh, and the southbound speed leaving the village is 35 to 36 miles an hour. So it's below 40 and our visibility displays exceed the requirements for the speeds that are actually detected on site. So typically um, in a situation like this, we would, we would be able to jump to another lower level of visibility display, which is something called manual for streets two, because our speeds are below 37 miles an hour. So we could actually arguably go much, much lower. So we have lots of visibility, uh, visibility and this is perfectly safe on this road. In, in terms of considering changing the speed limit, this is always an issue because you have to, the, the speed limit reduction has to go through a whole consultation process. And you'll generally find the police will not want to um, enforce a reduction in speed unless the speed can enforce itself. So you would get objection from the police, I would expect in this instance, because it's not an issue. They won't want to um, allocate resource to it. And therefore it becomes an issue with a whole development and a highway design. Thank you. And I do know the problems with the police and the highways. Uh, and uh, when we get cars parked along there, when the houses get built, that will make it even more difficult, won't it? I, I believe for the sake of £12,000, somebody, this is what I guess it would cost to do that consultation and get uh, the local highways authority to, to reduce that 30 to 30 mile an hour limit. I think it'd be better done now than it would uh, uh, to, to, to wait for it to be done. Uh, uh, that's my only concern about the whole site, because the question's been answered. I just implore you to fight and try to get those to reduce to 30 miles an hour. Irrespective of your figures, uh, I'm just a death is worth, uh, is, is not worth it, you know, for the sake of that. I was told off today about standing in the middle of the road. Uh, but there we go, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stubbs. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a couple of questions, if that's okay. Um, and it focuses on the comments from the parish council. And so my first question to you, Richard, I believe, did you say you're also a parish councillor? I am. Oh, right. Okay. Yes, I am. Lovely. Okay. So um, the parish council, yeah? I, I'm not here representing the parish council. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. So you might be able to know a bit more about this. Um, so the first thing was the parish council had suggested or proposed about the this thing about having additional land available from the charity was that something you were you were, you were considering or what, what's your view on that um can i i'd, I'd let Aunt derek answer that question because okay. i believe that relates to to the concerns that the members of the parish council had at their right. meeting those who were okay remained. but was that proposed to the charity it hasn't been directly proposed to the charity okay. because Hapri are making the application on the okay. together with the charity. No, th thank you very much. That's great. My second question is to Kate. You talked about your hope for the people of Iceland to be given priority. We have had applications like this come to us before, um, and the actual um, housing provider has given a commitment rather than the hope that the people of Iceland are given a priority. Do you know, number one, how many people in Iceland would fit that criteria at this point? Um, no, I can't answer that, that question directly, but oh. I think maybe Edward can. Yeah. Sorry, the, the last correspondence with the Housing Enabling Officer, we were circa about a thousand people on the housing register. In Iceland? No, for the district as a whole. Okay, but you don't but have any in Iceland. But there's 46 that have a specific local connection with Iceland. 46? 46. 46. Okay. So... In that case, that's quite, that's quite a proportion compared to how many houses. Can I ask you at this point to give a commitment that we do have another vehicle for, called a community land trust where that is something that is a given. And we are very much obviously, you know, we really want to encourage affordable housing, but is there any way you can give that commitment that those people will be given priority and some way it's conditioned or whatever we can do? We would expect that to come through the nominations agreement. We, I know what, sorry? We would expect that to come through the nominations agreement um, following the section 106, and we, we have no objection to that whatsoever. Um, we've so, delighted. can we make that happen, Angela? I, I, I think that's an important uh, condition that you, you're, you're making a note of. On um, 
page 14 at 5.11, you've got the comments from our strategic housing team. Yeah. And in there, they said, should consent be granted, I'd request the 106 contains the following affordable housing provisions. And in there, it says it would be uh, the occupation be in accordance with a nomination agreement. Right. So there would have to be a nomination agreement there as part of it. So we can make a note of that so that that's to look at eyes and residents first. But, and then there would be a, we would expect a priority to be given. And then there would be a people. cascade approach just in case there isn't people which have got that local course. connection. You then have that cascade approach. Oh, absolutely. Approach yeah, no, I, I get that. Kate made that point. Yeah. But I think that if we can have that there, I think that will be very, very important part of this if it were approved. Thank you very much. That's my final question. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. I, I may have missed something totally here, but I see that six trees are being removed and a number are being replaced. Uh, am I right in saying there isn't a specific number on how many new trees are being planted? Yes. The six trees that are proposed to remove are, are low quality and the, the trees proposed I can't give you an exact figure, but can say far outweigh the six that are being removed. So you'd be quite happy to say that if you were pulling six down, you would be planting at least six in replacement? Yes, many more. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, is any, any other members? Councillor Trapp, second go. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, What's the breakdown of the, um, you've got 45 houses, what's the breakdown of which are going to be shared ownership and which are going to be rented? So 20 would be for shared ownership? Yeah, but, but in, in terms of the actual mix. Okay. So um, four, yeah. I may have missed it somewhere further down the line. I'm sorry about that. Um, sorry, bear with me a moment. I have got that here in my folder. Just while okay, located, okay, I think it's important to clarify that the mix is somewhat dictated to us by the housing enabling officer. So you'll see that there is, I think it's the two four bedroom dwellings were specifically. Can I just requested. interrupt if I may? I think the planning manager has some extra comment to add here. If you'll, if you, if you, if that hasn't satisfied you then i'll reconnect you again once she said what she's it was just to draw members attention page 36 there's actually a table there which sets okay. out the house types in terms of shared ownership and rented so it sets out clearly which ones are which okay. um, but i do have that in front of me if you'd like me to share it okay. yeah so we've got uh, six three bed houses um which are semi-detached two detached three bed houses two bungalows, two bed bungalows, and 10 two bed houses for shared ownership. Which covers the opportunity for those that are first home, those that are looking maybe to um, move to a bigger home, and also recent experiences, people looking to downsize, which is satisfied yes. by the bungalows. Thank you. Well, I think, uh... Unless you, I did catch you halfway through a sentence. So, is there anything you wanted me to say before you go and sit down? No, it was just to clarify that the the mix is dictated to that's behave by the housing enabling officer. So these are sort of specific requirements for locals. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, panel. And now we have uh, you. You can resume your seats. Uh, and we have now Councillor Beckett. Uh, who is from the Parish Council. You're probably familiar with the microphone arrangements, Councillor Beckett. Yeah, and you've got five minutes and eight seconds. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Very pleased with the opportunity to be able to come and speak. Um, could I ask Angela if we could have the two views of the station road where the 30 mile an hour speed limit is to uh, perhaps just show what I'm talking about here. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, so Eisen Parish Council are very pleased with this application. Yeah, it's something we want for the village. We want the affordable housing and we're fully in agreement with most of the scheme. Um, unfortunately, um, although we raised concerns right from the very start with Havebury, they have considered that our concerns are not um, something they should address. 
and this relates to the, um, the service road, which um, we have asked them to provide next to the road, next to Station Road. Um, we have quite a large development of Bloor Homes on Fordham Road, which is the other, on the other side of this site. And on there, we did ask for a service road, which they provided. And that has been, well, ideal in that we have no parking on Fordham Road. So there's no vehicles parked on the road. Um, Isom is a rural village. We have farms, we have a lot of farms in the village. Most of the land is agriculture. This road is used by some very large agricultural vehicles. And consequently, we feel that any cars parked on this section of road here would be detrimental to highway safety. Um, part of our um, Islam's neighbourhood plan, uh, policy three, is that while accommodating anticipated vehicle movements and avoiding informal parking on pavements. Now we feel that having houses directly on the front of this side of the road would encourage visitor parking on the road. We know it happens in other places in the village and we're aware of that. Um, the highways comments on at five six actually takes notice of this in that they have put that inter vehicle visibility to the north is 92 meters, not 89. And they're raising that as not a major concern, but they are noting it. And if it's worth noting, it's obviously there. And that is before you get to the pinch point, which is a blind bend. And this is local knowledge, local interest, showing concern at something that is there and the possibility of future problems that we would like to try and avoid. Lady Payton Charity does own the land behind this development. They still own some land behind it. It would mean moving the development back perhaps four or five meters. I, I don't know exact, I'm not a planner. But for the sake of that, we would like to see it moved back and the service road incorporated. And for those reasons, members of the committee, we would ask that you refuse this application. We have no other option. We can't ask you to change it. You can either accept it or refuse it. So we would ask you to refuse it on the grounds of local knowledge of anticipated problems in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? If members, uh, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Welcome back to this chamber, Councillor Beckett. Good to see you again. One, one straight question. Has Island Parish Council actually approached the County Council as Highways Authority about putting double yellow lines along there? And if so, what was their response? No, we haven't, but we did write in our last um, objections that if the application was approved, it should be con conditional on the installation of double yellow lines on Station Road. So, Jim, can I just come back on that? And I'm going to look to yes, yes, our, please. our outgoing planning manager, well done, Rebecca. I don't believe that we would be able to, as a planning authority, put such a condition on, am I right? We would not be able to put that condition on because it's outside of our jurisdiction and our legislation. That's a matter we have to deal with separately with the County Council. If I could just make a comment there, you, you may well be aware that there's an LHI local um, highways scheme that the County Council run. And it's, there's we as a planning authority, have all we've got is the approval of the highways authority to go with. So we have an option, as you might quite clearly said, we can either approve it or reject it. And we've got to have planning grounds for rejection and the Highways Authority are content. However, as a parish council, you know that you can put in a local highways application. Generally speaking, the parish council contributes 10% and the county council 90%. And that could, and, and often does include speed reduction measures, double yellow lines, and 
of course, you'd have time now because uh, it's still a field at the moment and uh, probably the LHI bid system takes about a year. That's just my comments. Uh, we have Councillor Trout. I just wanted to ask you what you meant by service road. Was this a sort of glorified parking area in front of the houses on Station Road, essentially? What we have on Fordham Road is, as you come into the entrance to the estate, there are two roads that go off either side in front of the houses that are facing the road. So it puts a little bit of distance from the um, houses to the road. It also creates a little bit of more of an open aspect as you drive out the village. Instead of the houses hemming the road in, if it's as it were, it does give a bit more of a, a visual opening out. Is it, it isn't on this map though, I mean, is, we're not talking about the Francis painting. Uh, which housing are we talking about having this service road? The application is before you today. So it is so Hopeley really, House. But you're saying that somewhere else it's, it's got it, it's Fordham Road. It's um, not true. One over here. Oh. That one. What we proved. Oh, right, okay, right, okay, right, okay, so right. Talking about the road here. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Councillor Stubbs. Thank you, Chair. Hello, Councillor Beckett. Nice to see you here again. Um, right, talking about this land, and obviously I put it to um, the gentleman from the charity. Um, so let me just get this straight. We've got this application. You've, you're proposing something. Are you saying then that would is the land we're talking about to the left as we look at the map, so the west side of the of the charity is that where then you're saying you then you push everything along is that what you're sort of suggesting yes. was, yeah. right okay so as um the chair said we've got what we have in front of us and i did ask the other gentleman whether or not they've been approached but i was told they weren't formally um why was that not not, not taken care of why did they not why did you not approach the charity before now the application is by Havebury Housing on mm -hmm. behalf of the Payton Charity. Yeah. And we have, right from the very start, we have consistently asked Havebury to consider moving it back and putting this road in. Mm -hmm. And as they represent Lady Payton and several of the trustees of the Payton Charity on the Parish Council, yeah. they were aware of what we were asking at the time. Ooh, okay, so that's a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? Because obviously we've only got what we have in front of us. So what you're suggesting at this point, we don't even know if that would, would be possible. So it will be very tricky for us, but that's, I'm just talking out loud now. But so thank you very much for responding. Councillor Ambo Smith. Hello, Derek. Yeah, I agree with you almost. I think you're being a bit harsh on, on saying uh, to, to not approve this, but uh, Fordham, Fordham Road with that relief uh, or service road, as you call it, beside it, is actually 30 miles now. Because as I, as I left out, left Fordham, uh, Iceland today, I drove past that and it was 30 miles now. So not only have they got a, a lower speed limit there, they've also got relief road there. And there's also a straight line. Uh, so, uh, and this is not a question really, there's pretty comments, so we can have a little natter. Uh, regarding the LHI bids and so forth, uh, they're a lottery. You stand very little chance of getting any help from that, that view. And that's why I mentioned the 12,000 pounds. If, if uh, uh, you actually put 12,000 pounds or the uh, developer put 12,000 pounds towards that when you did it together, uh, I'm sure that that would go a long way to appeasing the uh, the highways authority and getting there because they're all worried worried about money. Uh, that's all they're worried about. Regarding putting signs up, I believe they'll police themselves. You don't have to have the police there and so forth. Once you've got your sign up there, it'll police itself. So, to a certain extent, to a greater extent, I agree with you on all that you said. So, uh, it's a difficult situation. Isn't it? Councillor Wilson. Good afternoon, Councillor Beckett. 
Um, if uh, the parish council were really wanting some double yellow lines, and presumably I would think also moving the 30 mile sign back a bit, both those things are actually possible to be done by the parish council itself. And it had the parish council is, is in the process of, of putting double yellow lines in, which it's paying for. And the high, rather than waiting for LHI bid, which if, if you bid now, wouldn't happen for about three years. So, um, yeah, it, it, perhaps that would be the best way of, uh, of the parish council sorting this problem out um, and getting double yellow lines. And I also think moving the 30 mile sign further out so that because this estate will actually be part of the village, won't it? And it, well, it, in, at the moment it's a field. So the, 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 the boundary of the village has moved a bit and I think it, it would be sensible to try. Can I repeat? Yeah, I, I accept that those are possibilities that we can in the future, um, if there is a need, we can do that. I think one of my concerns is if I'm taking a combine, which is four meters wide through that road and there's a car parked on the path, where do I go? Can I follow this up? I just think that a road in front of that would move the whole development back um, quite a long way back, and uh, uh, we I probably would lose houses in that, or or have to take a large amount of extra past that field. And I'm not quite sure how that would be. We could totally um, be a different uh, uh, planning application that would be required, and. Uh, it seems a pity to lose affordable housing, perhaps for a year or two, while the, the, our alternative plans were developed. Okay, thank you. That's th this isn't th this is a, just a straight questions to the people who are presenting. Now, uh, I believe you've answered, Councillor Wilson. Pardon? Okay. Uh, okay so uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any comments from the officer? Yes, if I may come back on a couple of points. Um, I think the first point that Councillor Brown um, mentioned about the, um, the width of the footpaths, and I think Councillor Jones, I think you also mentioned it. No, it wasn't you. Councillor Trapp, sorry. Um, Yes, yeah, so if you refer to paragraph 7.30 in my report, um, this was picked up um, and I, I wrote here and I quote, the adoptable width standard is three metres for a shared pedestrian and cycleway, part, uh, cycleway link. On balance, whilst this would not conform to adoptable standards, it is considered that the links would be within private ownership and they would not provide a strategic link through the site and would essentially serve a lim limited number of people from the site. And this is a conversation I actually had with the County Council um, Highways Officer. Um, they've not raised an objection to that, um, to the links as they are proposed and have not advised that it would create a significant highway safety issue. Um, as per paragraph 111 of the MPPF. So on balance, um, we consider that this element is, is acceptable. And my second point was um, Councillor Trapp's um, comment on the electrical charging point. And just to mention that that is recommended as a condition, it's number 24 on, on the list. We're enforcing it. In my okay. Thank you. I'm sure the committee is always grateful for your enforcement. <laughs> Um, we're just about to get to uh, questions to the officer. That's the next section we're about to move to. So we are now at that section. So members, questions to the officer. Yes, Councillor Trout. Thank you. Um, it, I mean, it's quite a bit, a lot of land there. And I'm just wondering why 0.5 of an extra metre for a shared um, cycle pedestrian way can't be accommodated there. That doesn't seem to be much worth arguing about here. Could we make that an insistence, a condition? 
that the paths are. And then there's there's a possibility then of linking them all up, you see, it's be part of the national network. I mean, I think it's something that, that you know, it is probably desirable for it to be um, widened to three, three meters. And that would mean that it would become adoptable. But I think given the circumstances of where this is and what, what it's serving, it's not something, I mean, I've spoken to the local, local highways authority about this, and it's not something that they can insist upon doing. And, you know, two and a half meter wide is, is, sufficient it's just for for it to become adoptable they would prefer it to be three meters but it wouldn't cause any sort of detrimental harm to highway safety so if a cyclist and the pedestrian were to be using it, it there wouldn't be sort of a high risk or conflict between the two people this is questions for the officer yes okay carry on If the footpaths aren't adoptable, who will be re responsible for repair of those footpaths going forward? I would assume it'd be the housing provider. Um, you're happy with that? Is the, uh, are the applicants happy with that? They're nodding their heads. So I must yes. look, I'm talking to you, I'll get in trouble. Uh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. Councillor Ambrose Smith, I wouldn't like to be guilty of silencing you. If you've got another question for the officer, you're welcome to go ahead. Okay. Councillor Wilson, questions for the officer. Yes. Um, I noticed some of the uh, uh, pictures showed some of these houses with chimneys and uh, not, they're not. It doesn't seem totally consistent. Are they proper chimneys or are they just pretend chimneys? I would, well, uh, in my experience, they, they are probably, um, re, uh, re, they're sort of, they're made already. So they come along on the back of a lorry and then they're just kind of put on top of the houses. So they, I don't think they actually serve a function as a chimney with, with a fireplace underneath it. So it would probably be more for decorative and um, to give some variety in the, in the streetscape, but the, that's not unusual. And we see that across quite a lot of developments in this district. Okay, we're about to move on to um, debate and members, it's up to you. Who's going to start off the debate? Councillor Brown. If nobody else is, I will kind of lay out my thinking. I'm disappointed that they didn't sell on the recycle way that they haven't brought it to the, the three metre standard, but such is life. My take on this is, and, and I, I recognise what I was in Parish Council saying about that service road. I'm afraid my take on this is if we refuse this application today, Haverbury will go to appeal. I can see no way an inspector is going to, uh, I can see no way that that appeal would fail in front of an inspector with everything that's in front of us. I agree with you, Councillor Brown, but I, I think it's probably a good thing if it is the wish of the committee that we, uh, that the applicants go away with a, uh, an approval, if that's what the committee wants, rather than we don't say no because of a possible appeal. I think this personally, as we're in debate now, my, my opinion is this is an exceptional um, proposal. And I think it will bring a great amount of joy and happiness to residents, young, mainly young residents, although I notice there are four bungalows. Uh, young residents of Islam, and I, and I think it should be welcomed. I think the attention to detail that has gone into it with the officer and also the provisions of things like the uh, open space, I think are a credit. And I would, I would be more approval than saying we're going to lose an appeal. However, yes, Councillor Brown. Sorry, Chairman, I didn't say that we should refuse it. I, was, I would have carried on to say, Actually, I, was, I support it, but I was just 
as we're starting the debate, pointing out to committee my well view, done. You started. If anybody else wanted to go for a refusal, I think they would be daft. Okay, I, I agree with you. Councillor Edry. Thank you, Chair. I've listened to what everybody has said. I think this is an excellent development. I would look, like to support the officer's uh, recommendation. I'd like to applaud um, all of those who've been in, in, involved, but also the, the foresight of, of uh, Iceland that we have actually got a development like this in that area. I think that's an absolutely fantastic development for the local people of Iceland. And I do urge that it is the local people that get the benefit of, of this. So I will be supporting uh, uh, this development. Thank you. Councillor Trapp. Okay, um, I've taken in uh, Councillor Beckett's views about the safety. Um, on the other hand, as I was leaving Iceland on the Prick Willow Road or whatever, going north, you know, there, was, there were cars parked on one side of the road coming out of the, which all right, it, it slowed me down a bit, but it was there and I have the same thing in my village. So I'm not too, uh, not that much sort of thing that there's going to be a real problem with car parking. It is a 40 mile an hour. The, the transport measurement, the vehicle measurement said there was about 35 miles an hour was seemed to be about the average. Plenty of time to stop. And uh, if there's yellow, I mean, it could be actually mitigated by yellow lines. And I think that probably should be happening. But I don't think it's not a fast road. I've seen much faster roads where there's been cars parked. And I'm, I'm very much in favor of this development and would be either seconding it or wouldn't, if anyone wants to. Am I accepting that as a proposal? You could accept it as a proposal, yes. Is it being proffered as a proposal? It is proffered, yes. I, I'm minded to proffer it as a proposal. As, 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 as the officer accept recommends? The, yes. Have you got a seconder? Okay, we have a seconder. Councillor Stubbs is seconding that. Okay, did you wish to speak as well? Thank you, Chair. Yes, sir. formally I'd like to second uh, Councillor Trapp's proposal and support the officers. Um, I, I always listen to what parish councillors have to say, so um, and I do take it very seriously what, what points they raised, but I was a bit disappointed to hear they hadn't formally approached the charity because you know the parish councils are very well versed in planning applications and they know that once they come to this committee we can only approve or reject and within very small sort of limitations add some conditions um so no way at this point could we even consider the possibility of purchasing any land to the left of the site and there's too many reasons why that couldn't happen but also councillor beckett was talking about possible um, agricultural traffic and all possibilities but not but here we deal with like you know black and white facts so and I was very glad to hear the housing association Kate to actually um, agree to having one of the suggestions by the parish council to ensure the local people are there's going to be a condition on the allocations agreement they will be given priority so I think that's really commendable to see housing associations you know engaging with the communities and you know doing what's right so I very much will be supporting this and I hope that the parish council do end up you know taking on board the, the um, suggestions that have been made by fellow councillors who are also parish councillors on ways that they've got around these issues um, but yeah I will be supporting this one so thank you. I will be supporting this application uh, and I think that there should be a considerable amount of credit has gone to Mr Ratcliffe and his uh, trust. I can imagine whoever the, the well-wisher Lady Peyton uh, was and she was going to help the villages of Islam. I think this application will give warmth and comfort and a sense of stability to people, and I'm sure mainly youngsters, who want to make their homes in Iceland, and, and I congratulate you for it. I also congratulate you for putting in four bungalows, which uh, tend to cater for the other end of the age spectrum, uh, and, I, and I think that's good. Uh, and 
you know, and when it came to the chimneys, I'm a great believer in chimneys. I think a, a house without a chimney is a, is a, a human without a soul. And uh, I, I, I think the chimneys really set the houses off. And you look at the other ones who've got them, and they look good. Uh, and congratulations. So I will be supporting this uh, proposal from Councillor Trapp. Well, um, it looks like everybody's had their say. So we are now, we have a proposal from Councillor Trapp that we adopt the uh, officer's recommendation. Um, I think that was it. There was the um, planning manager's discretion on priority for local housing. Local residents. That was done. That would be done as part of the Section 106 agreement and the nominations agreement. So that's already within the report, and it sets out there as a recommendation from the housing officer. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I now go to a vote. Uh, those in favour of Councillor Trapp's proposal. Well, I won't bother to go to abstain or or opposed, uh, because I know there's 11 of us here. 10. Of course, <laughs> of course, thank you very much indeed. Well, that, that the planning consent has been granted. And thank you very much for coming. And if you want to leave now, you're, you're welcome to. Okay, Re Rebecca, you uh, better do this well. It's your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Hunt. Um, so this is the planning performance report for May 2022. Again, I'm not going to go over all of the individual figures, but it, they're there if members have any questions. You'll see that the number of applications received um, following on from last month has decreased, which is a normal pattern for this type of year. And we have seen a reduction in the number of applications coming in, which is really good because numbers were at quite a high level. You'll also see on the back the number of appeals received and decided, so there's one of each. And then obviously our enforcement complaints and, and they're broken down. So I'll answer any questions on that. I've also got two points I just need to raise with members. So we are looking at holding a members seminar for phase five of the North Ely development. And the date that we have got in the diary is Monday, the 1st of August. So it was really to note members availability for that. And the second, um, we're looking at a provisional committee date for Sunica of also Monday um, in 22nd of August. So it was really just to see members availability for both of those. And I think if Tracy can take that availability away, so then they can look at programming those in the diary. So for the 1st of August for a member seminar, can I just see a show of hands in terms of could members? We, could we, before we go and asking people if they're coming, could we have a time on both the uh, seminar for North Ely and the Sunica? So member seminars normally start at 6 p.m. Um, and this one we are proposing in person just because of number of plans. And I think the City of Ely Council are potentially going to be invited as well. So we're looking at doing that. And then the provisional committee for Sunica, we are suggesting a start time of 10.30, um, just because we're unsure of how many people may be in attendance and in terms of people speaking, etc. That's a good question. When is planning committee for um, August? It'll be Wednesday, the 3rd of August. So we've got uh, a, a seminar and then for members' information, the planning department are trying to get the Sonica one at uh, Islam. You, you, yes? They'll both be in person. Yes, that's right. They've both been present and the council chamber is available for both dates. But it, the feeling has been with... Sorry, non, but, but the chances are for the Sonica one that will probably have to be off site. At the moment, we're looking to secure the beaches at Isling for that at 10 30. But if the beaches isn't available, 
then we'll find an alternative venue which would be large enough in the locality. These are both very, very substantial uh, matters and we want to have everybody having plenty of time to talk and, uh, you know, have their opinions and have their say. The Sunica thing is huge uh, and Ely North is huge, so I would appreciate it if members could attend. Councillor Jones. No, that would be the planning committee meeting to discuss it because we've got tight deadlines that are set by the planning inspectorate. So we have to work those deadlines and we can't move them. So that would be the sole meeting just dealing with Sonica by itself. Yes, uh, Councillor Avery. Thank you, Chair. I, I should be on holiday the first, but it doesn't coincide with anything with the Ely uh, City Council. So I think it probably will be fine. Whereas if you'd have done one in the evening for Sonica, it, it would have done. So 10.30 in the morning is really good. I think the situation with with these ones, and particularly the the North the North Ely one, it's it, hopefully people will make some priority for that. Uh, and it's obviously difficult to get everyone together at the same time. And uh, we do want to get people, members' points of view very much to the forefront. Anybody else got anything to say? Why I shouldn't say thank you, Rebecca? And we're closing down. Well, thank you, Rebecca. And we Sorry, close. Just before we close, then, can, can I just, just confirm that as far as the Sanica um, date is concerned, we would have a quorum for that date. Okay, so we're going to have a vote. So, so, so let's have a vote. So for, for the month of the 22nd of August, mm -hmm. uh, could, could we just have a show of hands if we would actually be available on that date? Make sure we would be for it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and that, that was the Sonica one. And what about the uh, seminar for Northern? Yes, it's a special planning committee meeting on the 22nd of August. Yeah, so we're not determining the application. So just to make that clear to members, this is an NSIP. So you're a consultee, but this is at that point where members can say in terms of whether they're in support, not in support. And Andrew will put a report together, which he'll present to members. So you won't actually making a decision on it, but it's agreeing our consultation response on behalf of East Cambridgeshire District Council. So it was a formal planning committee meeting. It's just it's because it's not our application. Okay. It's, 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 it's in the morning, isn't it? 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. Yeah. On Monday, 20th. So, it is at, so it does need to be called it. Mm. Uh, we do need to, uh, as a matter of information, to let Tracy know at the mm. seminar who is likely to attend at mm. 6, 6 p.m. on Monday, the mm. 1st of August, here. Uh, yeah, as, uh, sorry, as far as the actual seminar is concerned, obviously there isn't a requirement to attend because it's not a formal meeting, um, but it would be useful to have a decent turnout. It will go to all members. It will go, to all, it will go to all district councillors yeah. and we'll also be inviting, so we'll be sending an invitation to the clerk of City yeah. of Ely so that as many of the yeah. City of Ely councillors can come. So there's well. no point in yeah. asking who's coming at this stage? Uh, no. Uh, with the, Unless subject like to you will be happy it, it, that, yeah. that we, we will send an email invitation to all councillors in the next week inviting them to the actual seminar and we will also be sending an invitation to city of ely so they can send okay so we won't we won't vote on it today no, but we the members are aware that it's an important thing and we hope they will be able yeah. to make that that meeting Ooh. now i feel now i feel <laughs> we can we can wind the meeting down so thank you very much rebecca uh, Thank you. You know, and uh, we have appreciated your help and assistance and guidance. Uh, and even at the last minute, you were able to guide us. Um, <laughs> so thank you. And the meeting is now closed. Thank you, Chair. <laughs>